this video we are going to study some of the important uses of punctuation again uh, punctuations play a very important role uh, in uh, in grammar and uh, the primary purpose of punctuation is I'm I'm writing this to avoid confusion please understand this is used to avoid confusion and we all know the use of exclamation mark the use of question mark the use of full stops that we are not going to discuss these three punctuation marks because these are quite straightforward and need not be discussed in great detail so we all know that whenever we have some kind of emotion or surprise or some kind of you know uh, excitement any kind of emotion that we have in mind we always use the exclamation mark for questions we use the question mark and for ending something we use the full stop there is nothing more to these but yes there are three more and very important punctuations the first is comma the comma is in fact the most important of all the punctuations because it is the most frequently used it is the most frequently used and it is used in variety of ways most frequently used and it is used in many ways for many purposes understand it is used in many ways and for many purposes and that is precisely why we are discussing the usage of comma right so we will straight away start with commas and we will focus only on the necessary part we will we will ignore the unnecessary part which we all are familiar with which we all are familiar some important rules on the usage of commas right look at the first one now in a series of three or four more terms with a single conjunction there must be a comma after each term except the last so he says that there must be a comma after the each term except the last so you can say apples oranges and tomatoes upright sincere and polite many people say that should we have comma here or should we not i say you keep it here it's optional so you may or may not have it but i keep it because that shows that this and this and this all are three separate entities so entity a and then a comma entity b and then a comma and then you put a conjunction and then you put a comma this is not just restricted to only three nouns even three phrases you can have three phrases separated by a comma you can have three dependent clauses separated by a comma right you can say you can say that uh, the battle of right the battle of panipat you can say right uh, you can say the battle of buxar right the battle of panipat the battle of buxar and some other battle and the battle of let's say uh, battle of plassey laid the foundation of right laid the foundation of the british empire so there are three things right the battle of panipat now this is not a noun this is basically a phrase it's a noun phrase the battle of panipat the battle of buxar and you put a comma and then you put it this way so this is not only applicable to just three simple words or nouns it is applicable to three phrases three dependent clauses and any kind of this thing right so you must and this is a very simple to write you not discuss in great detail let's go to the next one now words and phrases also known as parenthetical elements that interrupt so words and phrases let's not forget let's just leave this for a while words and phrases that interrupt so if you read my essays i always keep on telling the student that this is basically an interruption now what kind of interruption you uh, you can you have in mind we will see the examples of those interruptions it is word and words and phrases that interrupt the flow of a sentence must be enclosed in commas now what do you mean by interrupting the flow of a sentence you must properly interpret this what do we mean by interrupting the flow of a sentence for example i might say john and john is rich now this is a smooth sentence that has gone ahead straight without any kind of interruption but suppose if i say john my childhood friend right my childhood friend and neighbor right he is my childhood friend and neighbor is rich now what is happening basically the sentence is john is rich but because you are interrupting the flow of the sentence by putting in my my childhood friend and my neighbor right something like this you basically have to put a comma because there is interruption in the flow of sentence this rule is not as easy as the one discussed above so this is quite simple and straightforward we are we all are used to this kind of rule 
but this is not so simple and i have written here but the writer must be careful while applying this rule for example cardamom right cardamom which is elaichi cardamom also known as elaichi in india is a spice that is often used in south asian cuisines now look at this it says cardamom the subject has come right and then straight away if i have to continue i would have to come here cardamom is a spice that is often used in south asian cuisines right so this basically becomes an interruption the author has just taken a short pause so i always say that commas often show a small pause in significant pause that must be separated to show that yes something different is coming in now so cardamom and you take a small pause a short pause also known as an ich in india comma is a spice that is often used the best way to see a country so see look at this now the best way to see a country is to travel on foot so the best way to do something is to travel on foot so this is basically how the sentence goes it continues here what is this basically this is interruption unless you are pressed for time right so there are many many instances in which we have to basically put in some information and this interruption must be done exactly at the right spot look at this suppose if i say cardamom is a spice that is often used in south american cuisines and then if i remove this and i put it here also known as then what will happen do you think it's the right place to put this information i would say cardamom is a spice that is often used in south asian cuisines and then you say also known as elaichi in india so people would think that you referring to south you are referring to south asian cuisines and therefore this also known as would basically start modifying south asian cuisines that's why we have discussed the modifiers in great depth because whenever you place an interruption some kind of extra information that information is about what thing and therefore this interruption must be done at the right place so that the author realizes okay the best way to see a country unless of course unless you are pressed for time unless you are pressed for time that means basically unless there is scarcity of time so the best way provided this condition is applied we clearly see that in the sentence above also known as elaichi blocks the flow of the main idea and the end of the sentence right and has therefore been set off by commas when the interruption is slight that means the, the interruption is not significant the commas may be omitted for example look look at this my brother john has arrived it's simple we can say my brother who is john has arrived so you say my brother has arrived my brother john has arrived john means john is your brother or else you might say my brother comma john has arrived so all the ways are clear so the, the author says if the interruption is mild one you may not need the comma but if the interruption is really a big one then you will have to put a comma to avoid confusion let's go and take the next slide now this is a new rule it says restrictive clauses are never set off by commas while not restrictive clauses are often by commas first of all what you must understand so you must have gone through the earlier videos so it is basically restrictive clauses and then it is non restrictive clauses right so these are the two different things restrictive and non restrictive let's try to understand and i will read this for you because see this is very well explained thing you know but still we must try to understand the man who stole my car is right here in the shop now many of you might feel suppose if i say the man and then you can put a comma here how the how does the sentence go the sentence goes like this the man is right here in the shop so the underlined part is basically the sentence the man is right here in the shop or in this shop right and then you basically say who stole my car is basically what a modifying clause a modifying relative clause now understand why have i said this it's a relative clause it's a relative clause because it relates to someone and who is that person it relates to the man and therefore we often say it is a relative clause right and relative clauses can be restrictive understand this relative clauses can be restrictive or non restrictive depending on whether they are giving important information or they are giving unimportant information now look at this the man is right here in the shop what kind of man what kind of man so basically this this basically means not any man but the one who stole my car so this entire thing becomes very important and therefore the comma is not required look at this in this example the adjective clause the 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 the, the, the relative clauses are also known as adjective clauses please don't fall for the name the names are insignificant we all know that this is a clause right 
In this example, the adjective clause who stole my car provides essential information. Without this information, we wouldn't be able to identify the man. So you would say, uh, the man is annoying. Then I might ask you, what kind of man are you referring to? So if this man is John, then you would say John is annoying. So John is enough. I know John and therefore I can see yeah, he might be annoying. But if I say the man is annoying, then I would say what kind of man? Then you would say the man, the man who is, right, the man who is following me is annoying. Now it becomes clear that it is not any man, but the man who is following me. So now this becomes basically an important information and therefore I would not put a comma. Why? Because this helps me identify the man. But if I say John and then I say who is following me, then John itself is enough for me to identify the person. John, the name itself is enough for me to identify the person. Therefore, I would get this in the commas. That's why this sounds good. John is he right here in this shop. Who is John? The one who stole my car. Okay, fine. So John is in the shop and he is the one who stole it. Fine, that's fine. So this can be come in, this can come in commas. In this example, the adjective clause who stole my car provides non-essential information, right? It's non-essential. Why? Because even if this information is removed from the sentence, the proper noun John would be sufficient for us to identify the person. John is enough. And that is precisely why sometimes we use the comma, sometimes we don't use the comma. Good writers often do this. Right? Let, let's look at this. Adjective and adverb clauses that provide non-essential information are always in the form of commas. Adjective clauses and adverb clauses that provide non-essential information. Look at this now. In 1947, when India achieved independence, the Americans were planning to invade Soviet Union. So, in 1947, uh, the Americans were planning to invade Soviet Union. Makes complete sense. This is what an extra information about the year. Right? Something extra. Or you can say the front end of the river where the fishermen often quarreled was the only entry into the town. So the front end of the river. So this is the sentence. The front end of the river was the only entry into the town. Right? Now you would say why this has come in commas. Because the front end of the river is a specific information. This is enough for me to understand everything. The ear is enough for me to understand. But look at this. Please call him at a time when he's at home. Now, at a time, what kind of time? Do we know the time? Do we know the time the way we know 47? Do we know the place the way we know the front end of the river? No, we don't. That's why this becomes essential. It's all about intuitive feeling of what is right and what is not right. At a time, what kind of time? When he is at home. The man, what kind of man? The man who stole my car. That's why whenever you think that the information is necessary or I might use the word essential, you can use the commas, you can, you can remove the commas. Necessary, essential, remove the commas. Unnecessary or extra, you can keep the commas. Here the adverb clause when he is at home defines a time when the person must be called. So it has not been set up in commas. Try to finalize the location. What kind of location? Where we all can meet. I know, I know, let's say I know, uh, let's say I know MG Road, comma, where we are going to meet, correct, because I know MG Road where we are going to meet, why, because MG Road is enough, this becomes unnecessary, but if I say I know the place, what kind of place? Where we are going to meet. So this becomes necessary. Because the place itself is not enough. Just the way the man itself was not enough. So here the adverb clause where we all can meet defines the location where everyone can meet. So it has been set off by commas. It's a very simple rule. And you must write and read English keeping these rules in mind. And you will get a better understanding of things. Let's go and take the next, next, next. Uh, we come to the next part now and we come to the other part which says the following phrases are often always separated by commas. Now see, we, we saw that in a list of more than two items. So one, two. So we said that, okay, John, Jack and Peter, right? 
So we said this is the first rule. The other, the, this is the first rule, right? The other rule was basically uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the first rule was this and uh, the other rule was about interruption. Whenever you have some interruption, you can always put a comma, right? The third thing the, that we discussed was basically uh, uh, clauses, right? Restrictive clauses, restrictive and non-restrictive. We discussed that above, right? And now we are discussing certain phrases, right? The following phrases are always separated by commas, right? Now, please understand, appositive phrases, regardless of the position they take place in a sentence. For example, I would say Sachin Tendulkar, right? We all are familiar with the name. Sachin Tendulkar uh, is a Bharat Ratna. Sachin Tendulkar is a Bharat Ratna. It's a good sentence. Simple sentence. Sachin is a Bharat Ratna. What else can you say? But suppose if I have to build on this, I would say Sachin Tendulkar, comma, right? The youngest player, the youngest player, right? To represent India in a test match. Something like this, you know. Sachin Tendulkar, the youngest player to represent India in a test match is a Bharat Ratna. Now, what have you to say about this? Sachin is a Abharat Ratna, you all agree. But then I say Sachin Tendulkar and then you put some kind of extra information by saying that the youngest player to represent India in a test match. Now, this Sachin Tendulkar, this information is basically something about Sachin or basically Sachin is also this. Sachin is also something more. Neil Armstrong, comma, the first man to land on the moon was an American so, Neil Armstrong was an American, right? You can say like this, Neil Armstrong was an American. But if you want to add something, you would say Neil Armstrong, comma, the youngest or the first man to land on the moon, something like this. The first man to land on the moon, comma, was an American. So this first man basically becomes a, becomes a, a we call this appositive phrases. You can go through my video on appositive phrases that will give a better understanding. And the writer says appositive phrases must come in commas. That's why you would say Warren Buffett, okay, so it's Baron Buffett passed away this morning. This is the sentence. Baron Buffett passed away this morning. This is the sentence. But Baron Buffett is also what? He's the richest man of the 21st century. So this becomes basically a positive phrase. It must be put in commas. Absolute phrases, regardless of the position they take place in a sentence, must come. Right? Absolute, all kinds of phrases. So it says the children rush towards the magician, comma, their eyes filled with unusual delight. Right? So what is the main sentence? The main sentence is the children rushed towards the magician. This is basically the main idea. This is something extra. Something extra. About what? About the children. About, about, about their, their physical uh, expression on something. So whenever you have some kind of extra information, this is extra information. This is also an extra information, right? The children rush towards the magician, comma, their eyes filled with. So, absolute phrases. Again, go and check absolute phrases in my video on absolute phrases. You'll know what is absolute phrase. Participle phrases must have, must have commas if they come at the start of a sentence, if they provide non-essential information. For example, right? Now, uh, if you, uh, if, if you, if you, uh, Go to punctuation on, on, of participle phrases. Uh, it is clearly mentioned in that. But if I have to give you an example, I would say, John, uh, or you can say, uh, let, let's, let's take a good sentence here and that will make clear how to use commas in a participle phrase, right? Uh, I met John. Early, or you can say I met John, but then that would become uh, a wrong sentence. Uh, see, wh whenever you have, uh, you can say like this: uh, the man, the man is my friend. Correct? It's a very simple sentence. The man is my friend. So you might say, okay, where is the participle phrase? The man is my friend. I can say the man, and then say the man sitting in the corner. Right? The man sitting in the corner, correct, is my friend. Now you would say, well, yes, it makes sense now. The man, and who is this man sitting in the corner? What is this basically? Is it a clause? 
It's not a clause because it does not have a verb. The man sitting in a corner, this sitting in a corner is a participial phrase. It's an adjective. It's acting like an adjective. It's not a clause because it doesn't have a verb. So you can say the man sitting in the corner is my friend. So this sitting in the corner basically is a participial phrase and it is necessary to identify the man. And therefore I would not put a comma. Right? If this man is providing the, this, this, this information is essential information, so I would not. But if I say John, right, sitting in the corner, that means, okay, John is sitting in the corner, is my friend. So what do you have in mind? John is my friend, but he is sitting in the corner. So you can say John, who is sitting in the corner, John sitting in the corner. It, it is one and the same way of expressing the same thing. In one, you have used a clause, who is. In the other, you have used a phrase, sitting in the corner. But because John, the name is enough, I have put a comma. That's why it says, participle phrases must have commas if they provide non-essential information. They are providing non-essential non information, right? And therefore, I have put in commas. Or if they come at the start of a sentence. So you can say, sitting in the corner, right? Sitting in the corner, comma, John looked at me. Right? Sitting in the corner, comma, John looked at me. So John looked at me is the is the name, but because the participle phrase has come at the start of a sentence, I have used a comma. In my essays, I have always said that whenever you have phrases coming at the start of a sentence, you must use commas. Sitting in the corner, comma, John is my friend. Sitting in the corner, John waved waved his hands at me, whatever it might be. But suppose if you say John. Then you could you'll put a comma and John sitting in the corner waved his hand at me. Modifiers can come at any place in the sentence. There is no specific rule as such. They might come at the start, they might come at the end, they might come in between. If they come at the start, you have to put a comma after the modifier gets over. If it comes in between, depending on whether it is essential or non-essential, you have to put a comma. Something like this, right? So this is also clear to us. You go through the participle phrases and you particularly go through the essays. Because the essays will give you crystal example and it will, it will help you frame sentences in a different way, in a better way. Prepositional phrases. Now look at this. It says the phrase comes at the start of the sentence. If the prepositional phrase comes at the start of the sentence, you must put a... In fact, any sort of phrase, any sort of phrase that comes at the start of the sentence will take a comma. Of all the places in the world, this small town is the most beautiful. So what is the main sentence? This small town is the most beautiful is the idea, right? The main idea is this small town is the most beautiful. But you have to basically say this small town is the most beautiful of all places in the world. So if I shift this here, then there is no need for you to put a comma. But if I'm starting this at like this, then I have to put a comma after the end of the phrase. Of all the places in the world, this small town is the most beautiful. So whenever you start your sentence with preposition phrases, you have to put a comma. Same is the case with infinitive phrases. The phrase, if the phrase comes at the start of the sentence, to do well in exam, I must study hard. Or you will say, I must study hard. So you, you can shift this here. And if you shift this, there is no need for a comma. But because you're starting this, you have to put a comma for the sake of clarity. So understand, these are the rules. And, and the more you read, the more you will become familiar with those kinds of rules. Look at the other rule of the comma. Now it says here, dependent clauses that are always set off by commas. Dependent clauses that are always set off by commas, right? So now, now at the end of the dependent clause, although shows not well, we have a comma. So you can, I would say here, dependent clauses, dependent clauses, remove this that, okay? Dependent clauses, right, are always so you can say, uh, although she was not well, right? Does it make complete sense? Although she was not well, it doesn't make complete. If I remove although, then it makes complete. So you will say, she was not well. It's, it makes complete sense. The presence of although makes it a dependent clause. Why it's a clause? Because it has a subject, it has a verb. It has a subject, she, it has the verb was. So she was not well. The subject and the verb are there. It is meaningful. But if I put although, then it becomes a dependent clause. Why? Because I need something more to make sense to the sentence. So you say, although she was not well, comma, she reached office on time. What do you see? You see a comma. Why do you see this comma? 
because you are starting your sentence with a dependent clause. Not only when you start your sentence with a dependent clause, even if you are putting the clause here, you will have to put a comma. So, dependent clauses DC are separated from the main clause always with a comma. Either the main clause and, and then you have the dependent clause or you have the dependent clause and then the main clause. In both the cases, you must have comma. So, you would say, although she was not well, comma, she reached office on time. Or, because she was not well, she could not reach office on time. As she was not well, she could not reach office on time. She could not reach office on time, though she tried to. Like this, basically. So, again, you have a comma. Dependent clause has come here. Dependent clause has come here. DC has come here. Main clause has come here, right? Main clause has come here. Here has the main clause. So, this is clear. It's a very simple rule and you have to stick to it. Then it says independent clauses that are separated by conjunction must have comma before the conjunction. I have been repeating this in all my essays. John is my friend, comma. But we, right, so this is, this is small w, but we don't talk often. John is my friend, but we don't talk often. Now, this is one main clause, independent idea. I would say, let's not use the word main clause, independent clause. Independent clause is as good as a complete statement. This is independent clause. John is my friend. And then you put a, but why? Because you are putting something more. But we don't talk often. We don't talk often is independent clause. We, uh, John is my friend, independent clause. How are you separating it? with a conjunction because this is the right conjunction and then you have put a comma before the conjunction. This is the rule, the golden rule of good writing. It says here that independent clauses that are separated by conjunction must have a comma before the conjunction. Ground cardamom is an ingredient in many Indian curries. Right? Ground cardamom, it is Elaichi basically. Elaichi is an ingredient in many Indian curries. It is a primary contributor to the flavor of masala chai. What do you have? Independent idea, and independent clause, I would use the word. Independent clause, independent idea. And they are separated not by a full stop, but by a conjunction. And because they are separated by a conjunction, you must put a comma like this. Costa Rica also comprises several islands, right? Or Costa Rica comprises several islands. Calro Island is the largest island in the country, but, and you have a comma. It has many, but this is the largest. That's why but makes sense here and makes sense here, right? Never, see, understand, never join two independent clauses just by a comma. If you remove the conjunction and if you just simply put a comma, it is a gross grammatical error. Always use an appropriate conjunction or you can use semicolon. So you can say simply, okay, fine, I'm not very happy with the comma or this. I will remove this. I can put a semicolon here. This also is fine. You can put a semicolon or you can put a comma and then you put a proper conjunction. This is basically the most important rule of separating two independent ideas, right? That's why you see frequently, you know, the conjunctions coming in between, right? Let's go and take the last slide. So we come to the last part now. We have discussed the commas and the ones that we discussed about broadly are, they, they capture every other rule of punctuation, commas and everything, right? Let's, let's come to the semicolon and the colon part, right? Now the semicolon says here, we must use semicolon to separate two independent clauses that could be, that could have been separated. So, uh, John is rich, okay, John is rich, um, and, uh, John is rich, and full stop, he stays, uh, he stays in Bangalore, he stays in Bangalore, or he lives in Bangalore, whatever you have in mind, John is rich, he stays in Bangalore, you can say John is rich, you can put a semicolon, you can keep this as small h, this is also correct, in the first case, I had a full stop, now I have a semicolon, John is rich and so you put a comma and he stays in he stays in Bangalore. So this is the other way. So this is one way two independent ideas separated by a conjunction and that conjunction must have a comma before it. Two independent ideas separated only by a semicolon or you can put the same sentence as it is and put a full stop.
So we must use a semicolon to separate two independent clauses that would have been separated by a full stop. Separation by a semicolon shows that the ideas are very much related. So if the ideas are very closely related, then you can use a semicolon. For example, Shakespeare wrote many sonnets. This is one complete independent idea, right? Idea one. Some of them are addressed to an unknown dark lady. They are closely related, right? They both speak about what the sonnets. And therefore, I would use a semicolon instead of a full stop. Shakespeare wrote many sonnets. Semicolon. Some of them are addressed to an unknown dark lady. They both are closely related. And therefore, instead of using a full stop, I have used a semicolon. The colon, on the other hand, is often used to describe an idea that has come immediately before the colon. I love three things. You can put a colon, you can say what those three things are. There is one golden rule of writing. There is one golden rule of writing. Colon. Always be clear. Right? So, there is one golden rule of writing. And what is that rule? You have put a semicolon. Sorry, you have put a colon. Always be clear. I have, I love three things. A, B and C. You love something, you have mentioned that. One golden rule, you have mentioned that. So, it says the colon is often used to describe an idea that has come immediately before the colon. And is often used at the end of an independent clause. Of course, I love three things. And what is those three things that you have mentioned? There is one golden rule of writing. You can, you can end the sentence here itself. But you have put the colon and you are describing that. So it is always used at the end of an independent clause. So this is how we use... See, this is one of the basic rules here. I mean, th there, there might be more to it. But this is primarily 90% of writing is all about these things. That's it. The 90% the of the punctuation that you come across, apart from the question mark, the, the full stop and the exclamation mark, is all about these three things. The rest 10% should not be much concerned about because they are not so important from writing perspective.